Tulsi Gabbard co-hosted The View and things got spicy between Gabbard and some of the ladies on the show, especially when it came to some of the rumors that have been flying around in regard to Tulsi Gabbard and her relationship with Russia. So let's take a look at what she's upset about. I want to start with something that I think is also important uh, about facts, because recently on your show here, I was uh, just going to get to that. Good, yeah. <laughs> helping you out. You want me to ask you? Um, yeah. No, look, some question. of you have you accused me of being a, uh, a traitor to my country, a Russian asset, a Trojan horse, uh, or a we useful, haven't accused you a useful it. idiot. I think was the well, term useful. that you used. Which basically means that I'm uh, naive or, or lack intelligence to term. know what's going they on. They use that. I want to let I want to let your viewers know exactly who I am. All right. Set the record straight. I am a patriot. I love our country. I am a strong and intelligent woman of color, and I have dedicated almost my entire adult life to protecting the safety, security, and the freedom of all Americans in this country. So what she was referring to there were previous statements that were made by a few of the women on The View. So for instance, when the show discussed Gabbard and Clinton's comments about her recently, Sonny Hostin said, quote, I've often said that Tulsi is sort of a Trojan horse in this. She's polling at only 1.2%, yet she's still in the race. And then- Listen, Really, really fast on that. I don't. What does she mean by Trojan horse in that? I don't know, I really don't know. But look, like there are multiple people who are only at 1%. Yeah, exactly. I would say like five people are at like 1%. Tim Ryan, Trojan horse. Well, he's not technically running anymore, right? Yeah. But there's a lot of other Tim Ryans effectively. Um, I was recently reminded by an MSNBC graphic, me and Michael Bennett were reminded that Michael Bennett's still technically running. Oh my God, I, I just He's got still reminded. in this. That's kind of incredible. No, I, so look, this is the thing with Tulsi Gabbard, right? And I wanna note right now, because I never get credit for it, I am fair in my critiques. I do not like Tulsi Gabbard as a candidate at all. I think that she's a target rich environment when it comes to um, critiquing her, especially when it comes to her BDS vote. Uh, if she is a patriot who fought for this country, that means that she fought for this constitution, that means fighting for the first amendment. If you vote on a resolution to condemn people in America practicing their first amendment rights because you don't like the fact that they're holding the Israeli government to account, that's an issue for me, right? And we were critical of Ro Khanna for also casting that vote, that anti-BDS vote. I think she's a target rich environment when it comes to things like flip flopping on Medicare for all. She claimed to be this true progressive who was supportive of Medicare for all. Later, she says she's in favor of Medicare choice. Um, so there's a, a bunch of policy related issues that you can critique her on. But instead, the lazy attacks where she's accused of being a Russian asset, or it's just, it's lame and it's lazy. And you, I have to defend Tulsi Gabbard on that. Mm -hmm. Unless you have evidence proving that she's a Russian asset, you don't get to just smear someone and call her a Russian asset. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think that's a problem. Joey Behar had previously referred to her as a useful idiot, which is why Tulsi Gabbard referenced that in the video that we just showed you. Now, Joy Behar fires back in this next clip. Uh, Franklin Graham finds you refreshing. He doesn't find me refreshing. Uh, Richard Spencer, the white nationalist leader, says he could vote for you. Joy, this is why I mean, you're on, you're on Tucker here. Carlson at least 10 times. Why don't you go on Chris this, Wallace's this is, show? This is why I'm here, because you and other people continue to, to spread these innuendos that have nothing to do with who I am. Well, Hillary Clinton started it, and then you shot back at her, boy. You called her the queen of you, warmongers. You, you double down, unfortunately. Unfortunately, you double down on the baseless accusations that she made. It, it's offensive to me as a soldier, as an American, as a member of Congress, as a veteran, and frankly, as a woman, to be so demeaned in such a way. But you called her the personification in, of rock. So demeaned She's a woman in such too. a way. Oh my God. So, look, I, I, I don't think Behar's defense was that great. It wasn't great at all, actually. Well, and it's also weird because, like, so the thing started with. Hillary's original comment, which was slightly misreported. So apparently Joy Behar jumped on it. And even once it was corrected and she realized that Hillary Clinton hadn't literally said Russia, she was like implying the GOP or something. Joy's just sticking with the original misinterpretation. She was so excited no, no, by it no. or something. Hold on, I am as well, uh -huh. like the original interpretation of what Hillary Clinton said. Mm -hmm. She specifically said in the end of her statement, 
that Jill Stein is also a Russian agent. So like, hmm. th- like her camp's attempt to backpedal and clean up the mess that Hillary Clinton put out there, I thought was incredibly well, lame and I'm that, not buying it. That's fine because I, I don't care what Hillary says on literally anything. Um, yeah. And I, I wish that all of us as a country would move on from her. The frustrating thing about that clip is we, we talked about Jane Fonda's interaction with Abby Huntsman earlier today on the damage report. And that's a very similar sort of thing. Mm-hmm. It's a pointless thing, whether you, whether you think it or not, it's a pointless thing to continually focus on and the view in some ways, they're they're good people and they're doing their best, but it's always lazy. You're it's always kind of lazy, it, right? and like they were spreading misinformation about the Green New Deal earlier. Yep. And I get why, especially if you're on the show, she will have to defend herself, obviously. And I would be incredibly frustrated being called a useful idiot or whatever. I do think, though, outside of the context of being on the show, strategically for her candidacy, I don't know why Tulsi Gabbard is focusing so much on this. Mm-hmm. To me, it would be like if. You Richard know why? Nixon it just kept her. it helped her in her numbers. But that's mm, to some extent. I think the fact that she was being attacked by a high profile politician certainly helped her. That doesn't mean that the content necessarily helped her. Mm-hmm. In general, if you want to expand your base to include new people, this hardly seems like the sort of thing that's going to expand it, focusing on it. Now, her supporters are really defensive of her, obviously, and they think that what Hillary Clinton said is fundamentally false. So focusing on it for them, they really support you, they get fired up. But that doesn't shoot you up to five or 10% or 20%, let alone to first place. So I think like she could look at whether you think that Elizabeth Warren is a real progressive or fake progressive. She didn't get to like neck and neck with Joe Biden by focusing on this sort of thing, like right. focusing exclusively on how she's being attacked. She put forward actual proposals. I think that if Tulsi Gabbard were to like tour the nation talking about climate change or something like that, it would be much better for her. As defensive as I would be too, I would be. If I was being attacked constantly by Hillary Clinton and on The View, I'd be mad about it too. But if you want to do better pragmatically, how could this possibly be the way to do it? I I totally agree with you. Um, She doesn't focus on policy nearly enough, nearly enough. And even in the debates, I get it. You have branded yourself as the anti-regime change war candidate. Even though that claim is shaky when you look at uh, you know certain things she's done in the past. But I don't even want to get into that right now. Um, she doesn't focus on policy. She hasn't like differentiated herself from any of the other candidates with anything that really stands out. And I think that that's hurt her more than anything else in this race. Well, well really fast on that, I think like she's gonna be at the November debate. And based on that interaction, based on the, the stuff with Hillary, like of the few questions they'll give her, and you know that because she's not polling super high, they're not gonna ask her 30 questions. She has assured that some big chunk of them are gonna be about this rather than about her stance on whatever issue you wanna bring up. If instead she turned every time that she goes on a show like this from a conversation about about that to, you know what, I'm not gonna dignify these ridiculous attacks. I'm gonna focus on my plan for clean energy or my plan for education or my plan for criminal justice. Then maybe that's what they would be asking yeah. you at the debate next time. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah, John, you're kind of getting at the main point at this, which is when we're looking at Tulsi Gabbard's campaign, like we're looking at a couple of other different campaigns, we're ultimately looking at a campaign that isn't really viable for the presidency right now. We're at, we have the whole primary process, we got to shop around and look at candidates, but now the rubber's hitting the road and we have to look at who's actually viable. And so with Tulsi Gabbard still being in the campaign, it's mostly to like politically safe face. So it's more about what can she do with this time she has right now. The media criticism stuff will do very well to the view. You're right in your point that The View is just a horrible organization considering um, they have such an audience and this is what they do with their political coverage is mm-hmm. kind of lame. And Tulsi's gonna score some really cheap points with her base um, attacking the media in that way. And she should because she's been smeared by Hillary in that way. But ultimately when you look at her campaign, what is this about? This is just like mostly for saving her own face. It's not really about making use of the time she has, which I think would be a better way to do this. She made a pretty good, um, for for herself as being like, I'm gonna be the anti-war candidate, I'm gonna try to stand up for regime change that obviously didn't really hold up to scrutiny that much. But even as a single issue candidate, this campaign is not really going very well. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more, there's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video, thank you.